Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Sands Fire here in Washington, D.C. Xavier came across a phishing email that implemented a slightly different version of what we have seen before of sort of a self-customizing phishing page. The link the user clicks on does include the victim's email address. So what the phishing page does is it extracts the domain part of that email address and then loads the victim's homepage inside an iframe. In the past, we sometimes have seen this sort of done via curl, but uh, this particular phishing page is as so often hosted within Google's uh, Firebase storage. And there, of course, only sort of static HTML with uh, JavaScript is allowed, which does limit the attacker to use iframes in order to load the remote page. But since the original URL the victim visited did include the victim's email address, that email address is now passed as a refer and the organization should be able to identify any possible victims of this phishing scam by looking at refer logs. And of course, you also may want to take a look at limiting how your page is being displayed in an iframe. The old option here was X frame option headers. The newer way of blocking that is via content security policies and the frame ancestor attribute. And sticking with phishing here for another story, CrowdStrike is reporting how they have been seeing some phishing emails that are impersonating security companies like CrowdStrike. Now, in this case, the attacker actually doesn't ask the user to click on a link. The email claims that the security company detected some vulnerability in the victim's network and then asks the victim to call them back. Of course, this then comes down to one of those attacks tech support scams, but a little bit more targetness that they are using these very plausible looking emails that use branding and such from well-known security companies like CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike believes that the end result here will be that the attacker does convince the victim over the phone to install some kind of remote access tool. And researchers at the ETH Zurich came up with yet another way to take advantage of speculative execution in modern CPUs in order to leak a kernel memory. These uh, Spectre branch target injection attacks or Spectre BTI attacks, as they have sometimes uh, been called, are known in AMD and Intel processors and in order to uh, protect these processors from these vulnerabilities, various software workarounds were found, like, for example, a red line. But as the paper points out, uh, these workarounds uh, aren't perfect. They still allow for some versions of these attacks to happen and then, again, leak kernel memory and with that potentially escalate privileges. So I guess we're in for another round of whack the mole here with software patches that will address this very latest version of the Spectre attack. And about two months ago, Apple uh, did release an update uh, for macOS uh, patching an sandbox escape vulnerability CVE 2022-26706. This vulnerability, well, turns out was discovered by Microsoft and Microsoft now released a blog post with details as to how to exploit this vulnerability. The exploit is actually relatively straightforward, at least in hindsight, and does just abuse the basic open command and uses the standard in option in order to pass a file to Python, which is then executed despite the limitations of the sandbox. Again, this was already patched in May, so make sure macOS is up to date. With a sandbox escape like this, an attacker could potentially find a vulnerability in arbitrary piece of software that is restricted by a sandbox and use that vulnerability to take over the system. 
And ESAC reported in a tweet that uh, its researchers found uh, three different buffer overflow vulnerabilities affecting the UEFI firmware in several Lenovo notebooks. Apparently about 70 models are affected, including some ThinkBooks. And ESET is also releasing a GitHub repository showing or helping researchers replicating some of the techniques that they use to find these particular vulnerabilities. Abilities. Firmware updates are available, and while we don't really see a lot of exploitation of these kind of vulnerabilities, they're sort of the ultimate goal when it comes to persistence on a system. So I would certainly recommend that you go through the trouble and update the firmware on your notebooks. If yours is not affected, still take the opportunity to check if there is an updated firmware available. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.